Hey, nice. Would you like to make custom NPCs? Just like this? VFN? Music verse? Well, I can show you. Today. Alright guys, so we're back and we're gonna get straight into it. So, uh, I want you guys to first make a new island template slash project. And once we've done that, what I want you guys to do is I uh, go to Google or whatever and find uh, an NPC you would want. I'm gonna use the same thing I used at the beginning of the video. I'm gonna do skeleton uh, with animations, low poly, free model. Okay, and I'm pretty sure it's this one. Is this good? Let's see. Okay, this is not how I want it. Uh, but find which one you would like. Okay, so let's see. Anything you guys like with like any sort of 3D model is okay. So yeah, like maybe even this pot on poly pizza. Let's see this. This is not bad either. Uh, just that it might not have animations, but yeah, you should get ones with animations or your NPC won't look as nice. So once you've downloaded that, okay, so once you download that, go to, uh, back to Unreal Engine or on UEFN and then go to import and then find it on your, wherever you stored it. Okay. So I have it right here, animated low poly skeleton. And then inside of here, I have skeleton.fbx. And then you can just open it up just like that. Import. And yeah, here, what you want to do is make sure import animations checked up, checked, and then import all. All right. Da, 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 da. So let this import. And there we go. So yeah. So then what I'm also going to do is go import textures and put my texture in there. Yep. And then uh, let me just save everything but also these don't have our texture that we put on them so let's see because it should have this material oh uh, so it says doesn't have a setting so there's some setting that is stopping us from having it on the skeletons all right so what we need to do search here so we do skeletal mesh right here used by skeletal mesh check that apply it and yeah, now they have some sort of texture. All right, there we go. So we got all of our animations as well. I would recommend like renaming some of these, like this one right here. This attack animation. So I'll rename this like skeleton attack, and then like something like uh, let's see here, running. Uh, we'll just rename it to skeleton run. Or I accidentally just messed that up. Skeleton run, just like that. And then this, we can name to Skeleton Idol, okay? And there we go. Yeah, there we go. So now what we wanna do is right click here and go to Artificial Intelligence NPC Character Definition. And we're gonna type here, uh, let's do Skeleton Definition. And let's open this up, and there we go. So our type, uh, yeah, it's gonna be Custom Behavior. We're gonna have Verse Behavior for this. So let's keep a verse behavior. Uh, and here we have this stuff, health modifier, cosmetic modifier. I believe everything else is okay. Oh yeah, this behavior script, we haven't made that yet. So I think we're okay on that. Uh, but wait, let's see here in cosmetic modifier, we gotta go open this up and we have a custom character set. So our character blueprint, we haven't made it yet. So what we're gonna do is create a new blueprint and we're gonna put it, I guess we'll just put it in our content folder. And we'll call this skeleton blue blue print. Okay, and we'll save it. And then in here we'll add the skeletal mesh. And then we'll get the mesh asset from our where is it? Skeleton. And there we go. Uh my model is actually pretty sized already pretty good. Uh, if you want to change it, you can, uh, but mine is already sized to a good amount, okay? Uh, also, we want this to face the x-axis, okay? So let's change it 90 degrees, negative 90 degrees this way, yeah. So once we've done that, we can compile, save, go back over here, and we can set it, and then our animation reset uh i don't think we need to set that as anything for now okay so let's save this okay and let's get out of here let's right click and actually we're gonna go to blueprint class 
and we're gonna make an animation preset. Uh, but we're gonna go in here and we're gonna basic locomotion. Select that. We'll call this skeleton uh, anime anim reset. Okay. Open this up. Save it. And then here's where we can put our animation. So I already named them. So we're smart. So an idle move forward. I'm gonna have that as run. Uh, all of these are gonna be running. Run. Move right. Run. Uh, but for all of them, uh, I'm gonna for the ones that are not moving forward. I'm gonna just put like. A little slower like 0 0.8 okay your choice uh these uh i would recommend to put as a walking because normally i don't think even like a human why would they be running backwards because no weird right so yeah my character that i got just doesn't have a walk animation so i just put running and i just made it a bit smaller i'll be slower all right there we go so what's that done we can go back to our skeleton definition we can click this and we can put our skeleton at anim preset, okay? And there we go. We got that done. And then, of course, uh, you can change things however you would like. You can add more like modifiers to this. You can add this, and then you can add like other stuff, like movement modifier, which allows you to edit speed and stuff. But that's your choice. I'm not gonna do that stuff. So first, that real quick. And yeah. So once we're done with that, uh, we're gonna save this, we're gonna exit out of here, and we're gonna search for a NPC spawn. Okay, search that up, NPC spawner, and this is how we're gonna spawn our NPC. So we're just gonna go to character definition, and we have our skeleton definition. And there we go, we're, there's like a little skeleton right there. And of course you could change how many spawn, like I'm just gonna put one for now and stuff, this, all this other stuff doesn't exactly matter right now. So yeah, all right, but this is time to actually code our, uh, code our NPC. All right, so we're going to go to verse and we're going to right click right here, add new verse file, and you can call this whatever you want, but we're not going to add a verse device just yet. We're going to add a behavior, uh, basic, okay? And we're going to call this, uh, let's just change this. Instead of new NPC, we're going to put skeleton, skeleton, behavior basic, and create. And we're going to save everything. All right. And then we're going to double click here. Uh, oh, they open. Okay, there we go. And yeah. So what I want you guys to do is to copy and paste the script from the comment section. Okay. So just copy it and paste it uh but change the names of course uh but wait, let me just copy and paste everything and boom uh but i want you guys to of course change the name of this up here to the script so i called it skeleton uh underscore behavior underscore basic there we go uh so yeah and you're gonna be wondering why is there error here uh i'll get to that later okay and as we see here, skeleton NPC. So basically what this is, I can solve this error for you. Uh, we'll solve this one after, but basically this right here gets the animation. Okay. So basically we're going to go to our NPC and we're going to get this animation that they have, but we need to access that. And when I was making this, uh, I put it into, I accessed a folder first and then got the animation, but this time I did not put it into a folder. So our animation is right there uh, for attack. So we can just right click it, copy it, and then we can go back here and paste this here and just delete this. There we go. And that solves most of our errors except this one. All right, so let me just quickly explain this. So this NPC damage right here, you can change it however you want. This is how much damage the NPC will do to the player. Uh, here, we're just getting the NPC's agent, NPC's uh, fort character, because that all that stuff is inside the NPC as well. Uh, get navigatable. This will allow us right here, as it says, allows us to tell NPCs to go to a different place, like the pathfinding service in Roblox. If you don't know about the path side service in Roblox, basically what it allows us to do is tell the NPC, oh wait, go this way, go this way, blah, blah, blah. And it automatically figure out with AI where the best position to go to the player is. 
or to that location. Here, this focus interface is kind of just like the, the direction they're facing. Basically, that's it, like the rotation stuff. Control NPCs animations, that's this animation controller is what allows us to tell the NPC in the script, uh, play this animation at this time or whatever. So after it creates these variables, uh, we get the spawn location of where the NPC is at first. And what we do, okay, as we have a loop and we check if the NPC is alive, and if it's not alive, then we're going to break this because we do not want to cause lag in our game. So here, what we do is we find our nearest target, okay? And you're going to see it says behavior help, which has an error at the top. I'll explain that in a little bit. Uh, so this, we're basically here. Okay, this in a nutshell, what it allows us to do is tell the NPC, okay, if we're close enough to this player, okay, if we're close enough, then let's try to go to that player and focus on them okay that's basically what it does and then we have a play animation a play we play our animation here and then we sleep for the time amount in that animation so how we would do this would be let's go to attack right and we would find out where the skeleton actually would hit like you know right there it looks like that's when it would hit the player so we just put that much amount of time so that would be 0.61 seconds and that's what we want to put right there so distant difference that's just checking the distance between the player so as soon as it's trying to focus at that player it will check if it's ever close enough okay and it will try to damage the player okay that's basically what this does so how about we get on to with the behavior helper so to do this we're going to go back to uefm i hope we can exit out of this uh we're going to go verse explorer add new verse file and we could call this uh basically skeleton underscore behavior underscore help and let's create it so while it waits for that ooh, okay we do have some errors but that's totally fine so we're gonna go back to visual studio and we have a new file right there uh a new device and you're gonna have to copy this again from the link in the comment section it right there oh well actually i meant to paste everything right there and we can rename this to skeleton underscore behavior underscore helper okay and there we go so uh on our other script what we can do is go here copy this name paste it here and paste it here and so now we're gonna i'm gonna show you what behavior helper is all right so in behavior helper what this basically does is tries to find the nearest player so it could target that player basically it's a function and it returns what the target is is basically what this npc like enemy is trying to follow so we have a maybe target and it's an optional for character okay so this f is an optional for the character because we always need to return something and we can't just return nothing obviously so we return something right uh we return this variable which will get something at uh it will get something it will get a fourth character set to it but initially it's just false just to prevent this error but it still uh will be set to a fourth character basically uh this range so this is a range that you can change however you would like and it's the range that the device will search for the nearest target which is you the player or anyone else in the game and then what we do here is we just get all the players, uh, we check all players, and we get all the players for characters, and we check the distance between the NPC and the player, the player's for character, and then check if it's good enough. And then we set the target to be that for character. All right, and yeah. So that's basically it. So we could close out of this, close out of here, verse build verse code, and now we don't have any errors. Oh, uh, we don't. I believe we don't need to drag out any devices. Okay. And if we launch session, and I'll see you when we're in Fortnite. Oop. Okay, wait, guys. I almost made a mistake. Uh, what we need to do, okay, is first of all, uh, we didn't finish everything. We need to first go to our uh, where is it? The skeleton definition, and then we need to go in here. 
and we have set that as that. We need to set our behavior script to the script we just made. And then what we also need to do, okay, after that is we need to also add some physics to this guy, okay? So you can shoot him with a gun, okay? So yeah, so what we need to do is make a physics asset, okay? And we're gonna base it off the skeleton and we're gonna call the skeleton physics. Okay, and create asset, all right? And then you go in here and you could edit this however you like. This is basically the collision box, collision capital basically. Uh, and you could change it however you like, okay? So, uh, basically it's done though, so we could just save it, get out of here. And then inside of our skeleton, skeletal mesh, we can add this, uh, physics asset, but it's already added for us. And yeah, so wait, let's try to launch session now and see if we're good to go. Last time it gave me some problem, validation failed. So it says missing behavior script. Uh, it's kind of weird because there's a behavior script right there. Uh, yeah, it says that, yeah, we have a behavior script right there. Uh, oh wait, maybe because it's not saved. And then it says missing character modifier in the skeleton definition. Uh, what modifier? Let's see. Let's see here. So, let's see. Uh, alright guys, but I think that was just because I had that empty one there. So I think we're okay though. Let's see. I launch session. Uh, validating three project files. Yep, and it worked. Okay. So I'll see you guys in the game, basically. All right, guys. So I'm in. So let's start game and let's see what happens. So let's see. Oh, it's bot. It's here. Oh, it's attacking me. Oh, goddamn, damn, damn, damn. Okay, it's attacking me. All right. See, as we see, it works. And uh, let's see if I get a gun. Let's see what happens. So if we get out of here, and let's say I get out a gun. Let's use. Okay, wait. Let's use, let's see here, devices. Let's go here and let's search up in inventory. Let's just put this right about there. And then let's just drop a gun in. So let's use, I don't know. Um, let's, I don't know what gun we should use guys. Uh, let's, let's try out the fist, see if they work. Let's try out, um, uh, let's get, yeah, let's get this assault rifle. So boom. Oh, okay. There we go. And then inside of here, uh, all I want to do is just go to initial weapon ammo and just make that max spare weapon ammo. I'll just make that like two, I mean, 200 and both. All right, so let's start the game. Let's see. So if we start this, let's go here. Oh, there we go. And let's see if these fists work. Bing, 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 bing. All right, they seem like they're working. Bing and boom. Is dead. And let's drop the gun. And it's dead. And it works perfectly. So we can kill them and everything. And of course, the script stops the um, it stops the loop from keep on going. Oh, well, I'm dead. But also, if you want to change the health of the guys, all you have to go do is go here. And there we go. Uh, right now it's on is invulnerable, which is of course. Oh no, is vulnerable. That's fine. Uh, but you can change this stuff here, like starting health and health and all that. But that's basically it for this tutorial. Uh, and shout out to Map Academy because they were really helpful. As I could this tutorial, I don't even think I could do that do it without them. So yeah, they basically helped a lot with this tutorial so thank you guys so much for watching glucraft is about inspiration and learning so i can't wait to see you guys next time bye